It appears tonight that the United States is on the verge of an agreement with Afghanistan that would clear the way for thousands of U.S. troops to train and assist Afghan forces after the NATO combat mission ends next year. But there are a lot of ways this deal could go wrong, and Jeff Martin, uh, David Martin, is following the story. Secretary of State Kerry emerged from a meeting with visiting dignitaries to announce a deal. That in a series of conversations with President Karzai in the course of this morning, even interrupting some of our conversations, uh, that uh, we reached uh, an agreement uh, as to the final language of the bilateral security agreement that will be placed before the lawyer Jirga uh, tomorrow. The lawyer Jirga is a council of Afghan elders, and until the agreement is approved by them and by the Afghan parliament, it's not a done deal. U.S. officials say there are two potential sticking points. One is President Karzai's insistence American troops should never search or attack Afghan homes, operations which in the past have resulted in the deaths of Afghan civilians. But the U.S. wants the right to send in its own troops, for instance, to rescue a captured American soldier. For that, Karzai wants a letter from President Obama expressing regret for past civilian casualties and promising U.S. soldiers will only enter Afghan homes under extraordinary circumstances. The second issue is immunity for U.S. troops from prosecution under Afghan law. Without it, the U.S. will pull all its troops out. But President Karzai said last month he didn't even discuss immunity with Kerry during their marathon negotiating sessions and would leave the entire issue up to the lawyer Jirga. The agreement says nothing about how many American troops would remain in Afghanistan after 2014. The president has not made a decision yet, but the number is expected to be around five to 8,000 compared to the present 48,000. David Martin at the <clears throat> Pentagon for us tonight. David, thank you very much.